actually three things I want to talk to you about today. As an as a exchange business development employee, um, three common things that I come across. One, it's challenging to overcome the negative perception of derivatives. Two, uh, I want to talk to you about the, the notion of counterparty risk. And lastly, I want to talk to you about liquidity risk. Uh, be before we get into those, those three things, though, um, I think it's important that we define what a derivative is. So a derivative is essentially an asset whose value is derived from some other asset. So you see on, the, on this chart, we've got the S&P, the SPX, the, that's the ticker symbol for the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is a index of large cap US stocks, and that's, that's the blue line. And then uh, the red line is VIX, which stands for the volatility index. At CBE, we trade uh, a lot of S&P 500 options, and we trade a lot of VIX futures and options. So the S&P 500 is the underlying, and the options on the S&P 500 are the derivative. So, um, and you can see from the, the, the chart that there's uh, an inverse correlation between stocks and VIX. So as VIX go, as, as the stock market moves lower, VIX moves higher. And that's why sometimes you may have heard VIX referred to as the investor fear gauge. So as the stock market moves lower, VIX moves higher. And you see that most pronounced in the period from 2007 to 2009, when the S&P 500 went down to from about 1,500 down to about 750, while the VIX uh, shot up from around 20 to up to 80. Uh, so that's why it's referred to as, as the investor fear gauge. But that period in particular, 2007 to 2009, was a very important period. It's the, the financial crisis. And, and during that, that period, uh, derivatives received a lot of negative press, and in some instances, very justifiably so. Uh, Warren Buffett famously stated that derivatives are financial weapons of mass destruction. And in, in uh, many instances, I, I would agree with Mr. Buffett, uh, but I would add a, a caveat to that. And I'd say that derivatives can be financial weapons of mass destruction if they're used improperly. Um, if they're used properly, they can be risk-reducing tools rather than risk-enhancing tools. And that's a, a key thing that I try to communicate to potential customers of C CBOE, that the derivative products that are available on our exchange are actually risk-reducing products, not risk-enhancing products. Um, I like to think, uh, I, I, I think it's good to make an analogy of derivatives to insurance. So just as you, you insure your car or your home, uh, you can insure your stock portfolio. So say, for instance, you were concerned about a decline in the stock market. You could buy, uh, and you have a, a portfolio, a diversified portfolio of stocks, you could buy a put option on the S&P 500. And that put option will increase in value if the stock market moves lower. Um, so just as you pay a premium for your insurance policy, you pay a, a premium for the option, and that option pays off if there's a uh, disaster. But like any other uh, product, you want to you buy it when it's low. So I, instead of thinking of VIX as the investor fear gauge, I like to think of it as, the, as perhaps a, a measure uh, of the cost of insuring a portfolio of stocks. So when, when the market's moving lower, the price of insurance is going higher. So when you really want, you want to buy your, your insurance when VIX is lower, you don't want to wait until the stock market is selling off and, and the price of insurance is going way, way higher. Because essentially, that's, that's akin to, to uh, buying, uh, buying homeowner's insurance when your house is already on fire. So the price is going to be very, very high. So, that's one thing we try to communicate to, to new customers at the exchange is our products are there to help reduce risk. And derivatives are not necessarily a nasty word. It's, it it's, can be a, a risk-reducing mechanism, not a risk-enhancement enhance, tool. Uh, secondly, we t and, and very closely related, we talk to customers a lot about uh, counterparty risk. So we need to make a distinction between 
uh, OTC derivatives, over-the-counter derivatives, and exchange-traded derivatives. So an over-the-counter derivative is a privately negotiated contract between uh, a bank and a, some other institutional investor. And the example I had before where uh, I, I bought a put option on the S&P 500, that could be done in the over-the-counter market or it could be done at CBOE. Now, if it's done in the over-the-counter market, if I bought a put option on the S&P 500 from XYZ Bank, for instance, and uh, that option contract expires one year from today, if XYZ Bank goes bankrupt between, uh, sometime between today and the expiration of that contract, the value of my put option is essentially worthless. That's what counterparty risk is. So, so when, you, when you're transacting in the over-the-counter market, you're taking on the creditworthiness of the uh, bank in which you're trading with. And then there's a key distinction between over-the-counter derivatives and exchange-traded derivatives because your counterparty in the exchange environment is a central clearinghouse. And the central clearinghouse is, uh, has the utmost creditworthiness. The, uh, Central Clearinghouse for CBOE is the Options Clearing Corporation. They have been deemed by regulators to be a systemically important uh, financial market utility, which is, they, they, they refer to them as a SIFMU. So as, as the regulators have designated these central carbon parties as SIFMUs, it means enhanced regulation, enhanced uh, creditworthiness to ensure that the derivatives that trade on exchanges perform in the way that they're supposed to perform. So that's another thing we talk to, to customers a lot about, counterparty risk. And lastly, we talk to them a lot about liquidity risk. So liquidity is essentially how easy it is to transact in a particular product. How easy is it to get in and out of the trade? How many willing buyers and sellers are there at any given moment in time to take the other side of your trade? So in the S&P 500 options, for instance, it's perhaps one of the most liquid uh, derivative contracts in the world. We trade uh, about a million S&P 500 contracts per day at CBOE. That translates to a, a notional value of about $200 billion per day. That's incredibly liquid. That's the, perhaps the definition of liquid. Uh, when, when we talk to customers, especially when we talk to customers about new products, a key question they always ask is, what's the liquidity like? And then they're essentially asking, how, easy, how easily can I get in and out of this trade? If the answer is it's not very liquid, that's a challenge for us to get a new product going because customers want to be able to get in and out easily to manage their risks. Um, so those, those are three things that I experience on a day-to-day -day basis as a uh, business development employee at, at CBOE. Overcoming the negative perceptions of, of derivatives, counterparty risk, and liquidity risk. Thank you.